we planted, we restored 3,000 hectares in less, you know, 20 years. But only, only last year, it was, you know, 1,000 hectares. So out of these 3,000, 1,000 was just last year. So it's been speeding very quickly. And we want to restore another 6,000 in the next two years. So, and we have been in, we have very good news, very good approaches, very good partners that I think we're gonna allow us to go for the Dream App in total. All the Dream App is about 100,000 hectares. So if we want to restore back 100,000 hectares in Western Sao Paulo, and if that is done, I can you know guarantee that's very good news for all the wildlife that is gonna be finally you know reconnected among this very this very fragmented landscape. I'm Laurie Cullen. Um, I was born in Brazil, and I'm one of the founders of of our our institution, IP, which is the Institute for Ecological Research, and one of the largest NGOs in Brazil today dealing with environmental conservation and, and, and of course, uh, education and sustainability. Yeah, I mean, INPE is, it, I, I, people might not have heard this, but it's, look, it's worth looking up online, isn't it? INPE, um, it's obviously a huge organization. IPE, yeah. If I, I yeah. could say for sure that INPE is one of the largest environmental organizations in Brazil today. We, we have our headquarters in Sao Paulo, but we work all over Brazil in all kinds of, you know, biomes and environments such as the Amazonia, you know, also, you know, the Pantanal, the Atlantic Forest. So we are very, we are very spread out in Brazil yeah. doing conservation. Yeah. And I wanted to start, Laurie, by talking about the Atlantic Forest. And I guess the first question is a simple one. What is the Atlantic Forest? And what is the state of it at the moment? The Atlantic Forest is a very endangered ecosystem. It's one of the best, one of the most endangered, you know, biomes in Brazil today. Only 18% left. So a lot of it is, is already gone. It's highly fragmented. So what's remaining is mainly in, in the coastal forests along the ocean, uh, but it's highly fragmented. So. And what is so special about the Atlantic Forest, it has high level of endemism, endemic species. And so there are a lot of species that occur only in the Atlantic Forest. So if it's gone, all these species will also be gone. And no, no other places we can find the species that we find today in the, in the, in, you know, this, this, this very type of forest. That's why we yeah. work to, to fight a, against devastation and, of course, against fragmentation, which is Sorry, the most is that? problem that we have. Highly fragmented. They have to be, you know, yeah. re, 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 you know, connected. Yeah, you need big bits of continuous ecosystem That's right. to make it healthy. Yeah. So, you, you know, so this, this is like the last refuge for some species that aren't found anywhere else on Earth. And you mentioned, you know, just there that we've lost four-fifths of the ecosystem already. Why is that? What are the main threats and the reasons that we've lost so much of it? We don't have those th those very threats anymore. We, we, we used to have that that you know devastation, that highly fragmented uh, occupation occurred you know 40 years ago when we had uh, agriculture expansion, yeah. cattle ranching expansion. M much of those th those you know threats are have really you know settled down today so i can promise i can say for sure that especially in sao paulo where we work uh, we have we have seen uh, a scenario that the forest is bouncing back is really you know uh, uh, coming back so i think that's good news so all the pressures that occurred in the past do not occur uh, currently you know today so we have a uh, very good scenario for you know for uh, work in the restoration front that that's what we do good and you mentioned just to come back to those sort of 
endemic species you mentioned earlier on. Can you give us some examples? You know, the, for example, you know, the, the species that will, for that was re responsible for the launching of IP, the very important tamarind, black lion tamarind. It's one of the most endangered primates on Earth. There are about 800 uh, individuals left in the wilds, 800, not over 1,000. So that's a very, uh, very good example of uh, an animal, a small primate that is still ranges in these very fragmented pieces of the forest and they have to be you know, reconnected somehow. That's where we do our work in terms of you know, corridors for life yeah the corridors trying to reconnect so that's a very good e example a small primate that only occur in the western range of the forest and that is highly fragmented highly fragmented cool. populations i know there's some species in the atlantic forest that we've lost already yeah a lot of birds butterflies some some you know small mammals uh, we can what, sit what, like, what would be an example what would be an example of a bird or a mammal some 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 you know of primates the, you know this sloth for, 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 you know for example this sloth that used to live in this forest is not here in, 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 anymore birds for example you know the jacutinga which is a very nice beautiful bird that is it's already extinct in the in the in, in, in the forest and and you know there are a lot of a lot of the you know locally extinct species for example you know the jaguars the pumas they used to range in some of these patches but they are not there in, in anymore a, a yeah. lot of the locally extinct species got you and we've been talking about wildlife i mean as i saw for myself when i went to i was lucky enough to sort of visit areas of rainforest around manaus last year and uh you know obviously people live in these ecosystems as well how, how is that how has that loss of the Atlantic forest affected people living there? Yeah, I mean, we have a very good scenario in Sao Paulo because uh, here we have a situation that, you know, the people, the rural communities do not live, they, they you know, not rely in this forest. They do, you know, agriculture, they do, they do all kinds of uh, 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 cropping, cattle ranching. So that's a situation which is a very, you know, positive to our side that the local communities do, do not, you know, survive. They do not need the forest for their own, you know, survival. So there is not so much pressure in the forest from the rural communities. So that's a very good part, which is very, for which is very different from what we see in Amazonia, for example, you know, is lush and burn, logging, um, ex ex extreme, very extensive cattle ranching. So we have a very good situation in Sao Paulo, again, in Sao Paulo state, there's these rural communities, these this land people, the, 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 you know, all these people that are in the landscape, they do not rely, they do not need the forest uh, products for, you know, for example, for, for you know, their own survival. So Presum very presumably, good they, presumably, although they don't necessarily rely on it for their sort of that's subsistence right. and uh, and economic survival, presumably that's right. there's a sort of cultural and otherwise loss there, though. No? Not really. They, they, they smoke no? Okay. We have a, we, we we have people that is still live in the cities, uh, that they go in the rural areas for like only for cropping cash cropping, cattle ranching, not much that you know related to the to the forest service itself so that's 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 a very good positive point okay uh well, that's good to hear um and to to what extent you know in terms of what we've lost of the atlantic forest ecosystem to what extent has that you mentioned agriculture earlier obviously and to what extent has that been about politics um political decisions that were made we uh we have a we have a very good um, we have a a very good forest code law. We have a very good legislation in Brazil and today. Brazil is well known, especially in Sao Paulo state, for uh, as as a, as 
a country that has one of the, you know, the, the very best environmental legislations on earth. So that's helping us to, you know, guarantee that w that what's left in terms of for, especially in Sao Paulo, it's not occurring the same situation in Amazonia and the north, for example. But in Sao Paulo, the forest code uh, says that what, what, whatever is left in the, and also the Atlantic Forest Law says that what is left has to be, you know, has to be preserved, has to be maintained. So, and, and what's not left, it has to be restored. For, for example, I can say that each, each property, each land, each land, each land parcel, each farm, each rural property has, has to restore by law at least, you know, 20% of its land. So that's a very good yeah. code. That's a, that's a very good law that says if you have a farm, if, if you, you know, don't have the forest there, you have to restore at least, you know, 20%. So that gave us a chance, a great, uh, uh, a great uh, uh, opportunity to restore back a lot of these areas okay. and a, a lot of these corridors that <laughs> need to, yeah. you know, to reconnect these remaining forests highly fragmented. Good. Yeah, and okay. Uh, and so I guess looking forward a little bit, Laurie, how concerned are you for the future of the Atlantic Forest? I think like when I look back and see what we have done in the last, in the last 30 years, um, I think that it's possible to change, to make large, large scale restoration as a, a main, as a main tool to bring a lot of this forest back. We restored uh, 3,000 hectares. Ipe has, you know, restored 3,000 hectares, the area of, you know, 3,000 soccer fields in the last, you know, 20 years. But only in the last year, we restored 1,000. So there is a learning curve. There is a learning, uh, is uh, escalating experience not only with IPE but also other you know partner in, uh, institutions saying that okay we have learned it we have learned how to do it we ha we have the tools we might have the funds you know necessary we have the local engagement we have the local support and we have all the all the environment and all the atmosphere that we need to large to 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 you know to to escalate the restoration back not only in Sao Paulo but in other states in Brazil it's a very special environment it's a very unique uh, environment it's very very unique it's very highly you know highly highly uh, you can find a lot of species biodiversity endemic species large mammals I did my, you know, PhD with jaguars, so I capture a lot of jaguars in my, you know, PhD studies because I want to know how the jaguars see the landscape. So we do radio tracks uh, about, you know, 25 animals in during an eight-year study because I thought that not only f not only tracking jaguars but also pumas, uh, ocelots, and other what and other mammal large that was probably the best way to learn uh, from you know the jaguars you know perspective view uh, how the jaguars see you know the landscape and using that uh, information to restore his own habitat back so that was my you know my really i could say the turning point where i where when i where i found that by learning with animals, you know, perspective, we can bring a lot of that information to habitat restoration. So you you just were talking about you were just talking about the you know seeing things from the perspective of uh, wildlife. I think you, your sort of love of them, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, was something that was sort of born out of a fairly sad, even sort of traumatic experience, wasn't it? Do you want to sort of explain what that is? Yeah, I mean that's also. A Occurred that when I was a hunter, you know, shooting all kinds of animals was not a very good idea in the past. 
So again, that's what I do, what we do today, not only as a, as a person, but also as an institution and trying to save endemic, endangered wildlife, but also not only, you know, the, the, the wildlife itself, but, you know, its, its forest, its habitat, which is more important. So today I'm very well convinced that if we only look for the animal conservation you know, perspective is not is is really never enough. We have yeah. to. I suppose I, I I was I was thinking of the I was wondering if you could sort of tell that I suppose the story of this you know, black lion tamarind that you do. I wondered if you could. Yeah, we thought it it was it was extinct in the seventies and in the eighties. We knew that could be a possibility that to find new, you know, populations in the wild. Because he was extinct by science, he was he, he, he was yeah. you know given as an extinct species by found in in the eighties when I me and a, a couple of friends we found that they here there might be a little you know possibility of still find some roaming uh, animals in the wild so that's how IPE started that's how our our institution is started you know thirty years ago finding new populations of the black lion tamarins in the wilds and seeing that they would not, you know, survive in the long term in this highly fragmented habitat. So that's how we, we, we found the IP and we found these this large uh, institutions in Brazil today. And we found the equation, the right equation that to save a species from the, from the extinction, you have to work with large scale restoration and of course with the you know the local communities that live in the landscape that's a very good yeah. example how, how, to how, how, how did how did you rediscover the uh yeah we do we we knew by in some fragments that you know people the local people were used to, you were saying that they they saw this monkey um, here and there and we we entered the forest we did all these line transects and we spent like a, a month walking, um, finding, serving in these local, these local forest fragments. And we, f we found eight new populations, eight new groups of the species in a very isolated you know, scenario. That's like, hey, they will not survive. They will not survive. There is inbreeding. There is all these demographic problems that we have to solve. And th that's when we, we, we said, OK, we need, we need, you know, all these corridors for life. Got you. And, and, and just to explain a little bit, you, you've talked a few times about the importance of habitats not being fragmented and being continuous and uh, wildlife corridors. Right. Just explain a little bit about how you went about trying to help this particular species, the black lion tamarind. Not only, not only the lion tamarind, because when you have a highly fragmented habitat, as we have here in the Atlantic forest, the species you have all these all these the subgroups all these sub the sub the sub uh, uh, you know uh, groups uh, these isolated families that they are in a you know ocean of you know agriculture uh, cattle ranging sugarcane and very small patches of you know forest so they cannot you know see other groups they you know cannot you know communicate with other groups, they cannot breed with uh, with all these you know uh, other groups. So this causes inbreeding depression, highly demographic problems. So and they don't have the you know you know survival guaranteed in the long term. So that's when we we have to manage them somehow. And you know the best way to do it is is to you know to reconnect this piece of uh, isolate forest by f with using you know. The forest corridor approach. Okay, cool. You and what's their status today in the Atlantic Forest? So you found these eight new populations that science today. Has not... it, if we talk about you know the black lion tamarind, it's about eight hundred uh, individuals left in 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 some conservation areas, but also in some of them in, in small forest fragments that we need to you know to reconnect. Got you. Okay, um, and just you know, we in terms of the in terms of the sort of 
threats to the ecosystem today are they the same you know you mentioned it's you know to some extent it, it seized off um but are they the same as when you first set foot in the atlantic forest you mean the landscape I mean, to the habitat itself and to the species that reside there. Oh, we have we we have you know restored three thousand hectares in less you know twenty two years. Though that's a large piece of forest uh, in terms of you know connection, especially because we only re restore areas that mm, that have a uh, importance in the landscape that will you know reconnect somehow conservation areas with these other forest fragments. So I would say the scenario today, when you see it, it, it by Google Earth, that we are very, we see a very good you know, scenario, very good change what, what we saw, we used to see you know, 20 years ago. Um, so that's very good news. Uh, it's possible to restore large areas in the Atlantic forest involving you know, the local communities and the farmers. Yeah. And can you just explain sort of how you go about that process of, you know, you, 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 you described it as sort of building corridors. Can you just sort of just explain for, pe just explain for people who are not familiar with the concept what it is and how you go about it? Well, all the work that is done is done with the, you know, climate community and biodiverse, you know, a tripod. So uh, a climate, because we know that, you know, forest helps against all this climate change. Uh, we have a very important component related to local people. All the restoration that is done, every, every tree planted, every tree that is, you know, produced in local community nurseries is done by the local people. So, you know, climate communities and, and you know, of course, biodiverse. So we, we have a very good emphasis in the CCB, climate communities and biodiversity. And we have what we call the dream map. So we have, you know, design, uh, the, you know, the future in terms of where to restore, what, what are the best, highly important areas to restore that will make uh, very, very, imp very uh, important uh, difference in, you know, in the landscape. We don't, we don't grow trees, we don't plant trees at random. We only do, you know, restoration where it's important in in the landscape. That's why we have what we call the dream app to, to reconnect, to see the landscape in the future. That's our dream. And we have been doing that in a very uh, speedy process now. Well, so talking of speedy, uh, how much of this is just making sure there's no sort of human pressures or disturbance and allowing trees to just do their natural thing and receive themselves? And how much of it is you speeding up that process? We, we planted, we restored 3,000 hectares in less, you know, 20 years, but only, only last year it was, you know, 1,000 hectares. So out of these 3,000, 1,000 was just last year. So it's been speeding very quickly and we want to restore another 6,000 in the next two years. So, and we have been in, we have very good news, very good approaches, very good partners that I think we're going to allow us to go for the dream app in total. All the dream app is about 100,000 hectares. So if we want to restore back 100,000 hectares in Western Sao Paulo, and if that is done, I can you know, guarantee that's very good news for all the wildlife that is going to be finally you know, reconnected among these very this very fragmented landscape. That's a huge, huge ambition. Um, uh, and one of your, I think, Laurie, one of your biggest supporters of the, your work has been Rolex. Um, you won a, a Rolex Awards for Enterprise way back in 2004, I think. Uh, how did the, winning that affect and sort of impact your work? The award it has a huge impact in, you know, in reputation, in visibility. You know, it's really helped to open new doors for new investments, new donors, new, new you know, uh, kind of friends, partnerships. So the Rolex Award, it was key to open doors for a name as, as a signature. 
as a brand for our work. So as a huge stamp that we we get for in terms of 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 course you know visibility and reputation. Got you. Uh, and I so want to ask as well. until today, you know. Mm. Got you. Uh, I want to ask as well why the. Uh, it's always be good to have a little bit of understanding of why the sort of company's perpetual planet initiative is important to your work and also i guess you have access to this kind of community of laureates that they have i just wondered if you could give a sense of the importance of that to you yeah i mean if we want to if we want to to escalate conservation if we want to escalate forest landscape restoration we we need all this we, you know we, we we need these new partners in size in reputation in in, in in partnership, really, that's there will be no other way that we can escalate a conservation in Brazil, and I mean scale. I mean, 100,000 hectares in the next, you know, 10 years without good partners. And I think uh, the reputation, the visibility of of being uh, a partner and uh, and a member of the you know Rolex community is gonna allow us to go for that ambition. Got you. Okay, uh, and talking of scaling up, I want to sort of step back a second and I guess look a bit sort of bigger canvas. I wonder when, when will you know your work's done? When will you, you know, you talked about this, you've got this new sort of 100,000 hectare kind of goal and will you be ever be able to sit back and say, yes, the forest is safe, job done? Yeah, we, we see it, it happened today because all the forest that we, we have planted, you know, 22 years ago, it's still there. It's healthy, it's, it's safe, it's been, you know, colonized by all these other, be these beautiful uh, wildlife. So, again, I, we have to look in the past to make sure that, uh, to say that, okay, what we've done in the past, it's, it's neat, it's nice, it's possible, it's huge. It's it's ambitious and why not? And we, we have learned how to do that. So we know it's really helped to you know to pave the way for the future and to say that okay we can do that. This ambition is is fair enough and we we, we just go for it. Got you. Are there, and you mentioned about your sort of successes with restoration today. I wondered are there any reasons to think that can't be replicated in you know, other sort of crucial forests across the world. One thinks of Indonesia, you know, the Congo in Africa. What, what is, you know, what are there any reasons to think this is not a model that can't be done elsewhere? Yeah, it is a model in, in terms of what people ask me what I think it's was, what's the most important, uh, in, in, you know, uh, a component of the success is long-term in, uh, institutional presence you know if you if, if you want to make a change you you you, you have to be there you you, have to, you you have to be part of the ecosystem you have, you have to be part of the local community you you have to go for engagement so long-term institutional presence is key and all the change all the all the results that we have got in in the past they were only possible because IP, our institution, our staff, our people, our team, it's part of the local community. And that makes a huge difference. Be, being part of the ecosystem, not only a, a, not only a passenger or a student or... Uh, uh, so you have to be part of the ecosystem. You have to be part of the local community. You, you have to okay, be present. So, so as long as people have sort of boots on the ground as it were relationships and boots in the, the ground, ground. And yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. a lot of it's our possible. staff a lot of our you know extensions people a lot of our team a lot of our staff they are part of the local community so that makes that brings reputation that 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 brings pride that brings uh, you know trust you know relations and that opens you know communication got it got it Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish off with a sort of ridiculously big question, which is, are you hopeful for the future of planet Earth and our species? I am very, very hopeful. Again, because I look to the past to to say that it's it, it's it, it's it, it is possible, 
and we have learned how to do. There is a huge learning curve that our team, our you know uh, institution, have to has to say. So I'm very positive, and I think we have very good partners, very, very good funders, very good team, and a very good law, very good system in terms of policies in Brazil that it's it's helping us, you know, to to you know to pave the way to the dream app and to the big future. It is possible. Got you. So even though we are still losing forests. Uh, the horrific rate around, around the world to deforestation and other factors, your experience gives us hope because we know we can restore those forests if we if we, we can do it. Will. Yes, it is it, 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 it is possible to do it in a large scale. That's the good news. One thing that we never thought that would be possible in, in the past. Today, I say that it's possible. You know, to change you know the landscape with the local community's involvement. Well, look, it's been really great talking with you, Laurie. Um, thank you so much for your time and coming on the podcast. Thank you so much.